I'd like to start out where we could just kind of talk about these poor people who live in the town of Deming. They're kind of screwed, right? If they if this dam goes, these people are hosed. So this morning, let's hopefully we could talk as a group and come up with some ideas on how we can help them. Um, with the goal that after we discuss and, and work out some some thoughts, we're going to group up and we're going to apply some of these alternatives in our group and then present our results to the class. I'd like to uh, pull up the Socrative quiz from yesterday. One of the questions, if you remember, is name three alternatives that could reduce life loss. I'm going to pull those up now. Let's go through these and, and we'll talk about them a little bit. These are these are all the answers that were submitted from yesterday's quiz for the um, give three examples of alternatives to minimize life loss. Um, for what one, improve the PAI, reduce warning issuance delay, check ways to communicate messages at night, and so on. So, so improving the PAI. Well, that where would that make the biggest alternative that we were looking at? Would that make the biggest impact? Seepage. Why is that? That's that's right. So why was it the most correlated to life loss? I mean, what was the what was the trigger? Like why is why is this PAI correlated to life loss for the seepage scenario but not for the uh, earthquake alternative? So people didn't have time to take protective action, even if they wanted to, right? Whereas if when you have a lot of time, um, people can take protective action if they will, and then that becomes very, very sensitive to that um, max mobilization rate. Yeah, okay, good. So, so improving the PAI. Um, one thing that we could do for that is go back to that elicitation spreadsheet and look at the answers and change the answers where they're less than adequate. The, the emergency managers and see how that adjusts the curves. Or you can go in and use the um, the best, the fast default curve, or the best the best case scenario default curve, and see if that makes a big impact. Um, that would be a good way to, to to kind of test that that theory or that alternative to say, hey, if we can get people to take action quicker, then we can substantially reduce life loss. All right. Um, here's another one: shorter warning issuance delay. Increasing number of destinations. So shorter warning issuance delay. That's good, right? Uh, that, is that more applicable to the earthquake or the seepage scenario? Earthquake. Yeah, I, I, I kind of heard, I thought I heard a seepage. Um, it's really earthquake because uh, seepage already has such an advanced warning that adding more warning onto that isn't really helping the people. Whereas that protective action initiation is really what's going to be what's going to be helping them out there. Um, it could still make an impact because there is so much uncertainty on when the warning goes out for the seepage scenario that that warning issuance delay improvement could could actually help in that scenario too. But really, your, your most bang for your buck is going to be in the earthquake scenario. So PAI bang for the buck is in seepage with advanced warning um, for the earthquake alternative. This. Uh, this scenario of shorter warning issuance delay is going to make a big impact. Um, increasing the number of destinations. This must have been Adams. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so was that, will that make a big impact here? If we increase the number of destinations, is that going to help people get out quicker? Um, was there significant um, traffic congestion? Uh, so if we put, then I remember, uh, if you remember yesterday morning, I gave a presentation and there was a shot of Deming with destinations on like just rounding it. It might make an impact. It might. Um, I guess a couple of things I would ask, is it realistic? Right? But that doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't do it. Just because it's not realistic, it can still provide valuable information, right? If you put a destination at every possible exit point and it does reduce life loss substantially, that's still reasonably good information to have. And that's information you can share with an emergency manager saying, hey, this is like best case scenario that you're going to get. If, if everyone just had perfect information, they go to the quickest point that they can read out of the area. So good. Uh, that might be a fun one to do is increasing the number of destinations to see how that impacts the results. Will that impact 
both scenarios or one of the scenarios, increasing the number of destinations. Earthquake. I heard. That's a good. That's a good thought as well. Um, because seepage has more people evacu evac evacuating because there's more warning time. Maybe the seepage scenario. I don't really know. All right. Implement an early warning system so that warning issuance delay. Uh, develop evacuation zones to improve traffic flow efficiency. So that's a good one. Um, if you if you split your area up and try to do a zoned evacuation strategy or something like that, or try to in the evacuation messaging you say don't evacuate east on was it 80 or 10 or whatever on that major freeway going east west. Um, if you don't evacuate east, then you're not evacuating towards the floodwaters, so that's going to push everyone west away or south away. Um, so that could be a good alternative is playing around with destination positions and removing some of those destinations is causing people to evacuate towards the floodwaters. Um, educate public on the hazards so mobilization rates improve. Good. So that's another PAI adjustment, right? Which really affects the earthquake alternative. All right, have good messaging. Yep, that's uh, again PAI and getting people to take action quickly. Have a good way to disseminate the messages. So that's the one. That, that's a new one, right? We haven't really talked about warning diffusion. Yesterday, with either of the alternatives, was warning diffusion. Um, was there a correlation between warning diffusion and life loss? Not much is what I'm kind of gathering, and I I tend to agree with that. Um, in most cases, oddly enough, the warning diffusion, the the rate at which people are evacu or receiving that first alert. Um, doesn't usually correlate to the life loss that much, um, which is one of the reasons we haven't spent a lot of time um, improving how that, that warning diffusion is, like that point space and then get allowing environmental cues and so on, because based off of what we're seeing, it's just not a huge factor. It's not, not even close to, to PAI and when the warning is actually issued to the public. So you could play around. Yeah, go ahead, Matthew. It might be, right? Like if you have like a word of mouth type of a scenario, it might be. But I have a feeling that whether the warning spreads uniformly or it spreads um, quasi-uniform with little pockets of growth, um, I think that it's still going to be roughly the same rate of diffusion and therefore it's still loading roughly the same amount of people, just in a slightly different pattern. And I don't think that's going to have a huge impact on traffic. Once, once you have enough people out there, it really doesn't matter what the pattern was, they're all going to be stuck, is, is kind of what gets at, yeah. All right, um, sorry, uh, we, so warning diffusion, it might, be, it might be fun to play around with that. Well, how, how would that impact? Probably not going to impact the, uh, the seepage scenario, right? The warning diffusion. If people get warned a little bit quicker or a little bit slower, it's not going to really matter when they have 10 hours to, to evacuate, right? So earthquake scenario, you might see some, you might see some, uh, some results there. Um, have public education program. Again, that goes into that PAI. I'm seeing a lot of PAI. Okay, help people to be prepared and understand they are downstream of a dam. Good, faster warning issuance. So we're seeing kind of the same kind of trend. I think we're all kind of identifying some big, some big ticket items here for helping these people out. Draft messages ready, good, good answer. You were definitely listening during the presentations um, to lower the warning issuance delay, direct messaging, yep, good. It's all, it's all coming down to the warning. Uh, I like that a lot. What about, what about um, alternative evacuation routes? What if, what if the, town, the, the city of Deming took this really seriously and put in a, uh, a road specifically is designed to handle large amounts of traffic um, out of the area, just one straight road out of the area. Would that help? Would that help people get out faster? Probably not, Jim, you're not. Traffic wasn't the issue, yeah.
and you can hear a chirp on your phone. It may be a politician sending a message. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you hear a siren, you don't say, oh, I'll think about it moving tomorrow. And play yeah. Okay, so siren warning system to get that get that first law out much faster. I think that might have some impact on the on this earthquake scenario for sure. One one thing I'd say with sirens is that if if you hear a siren, where are you moving? I don't know. Maybe unless that's the and I mean most places I've seen sirens is for tornado. That's one of the challenges, right? Is that siren goes off, people go down, which is the last thing you want to do in a flood. So sirens can be a little bit tricky because they can provide false information. Um, so the voice sirens are, are clearly the best in that case. Yeah. Good. All right, building a dam outside of Deming. No oh, good. I like this one. Don't build a dam outside of Deming. Move the population outside of the inundation area and better messaging. I think those first two are going to be highly effective. <laughs> you think? <laughs> um, that might be fun. But look, we're, we're going to be doing sandbox sandbox stuff. So when you get in your groups, um, I'm going to ask you all to come up with uh, you know kind of a list of alternatives at the start, and then select your kind of top three. Maybe one of them is what if we move the entire town of Deming or something. So that could be a lot of fun. We have, I mean, it's just a toy, right? We're just in the software, so we can we can do all that stuff and see what the impacts are. All right, um, risk communication, one delay protective action, buildings with high stability and more stories. Okay, so going in rehabbing every structure in Deming. It might be a little expensive, but it, you know we can at least see what what it's going to do. Construct roads with more lanes. Yep. So you can. In, that's an easy one, right? So if you want to if you want to increase the number of lanes, all you all you do I said almost said all you do all you do is you go into the um, the CFCC editor so under road networks and then you can adjust number of lanes for for each of those CFCCs and then that's adjusting the number of lanes for all of your roads in your network. Improved alerts for nighttime evacuations. Good. All right, that one that's a kind of new one. So sticking that uh, buildings with high stability and more stories. So that would be kind of a fun one. You could just blanket set everything to engineered, um, and then uh, and then set the number of stories, like increase it by one or something. You can do that with a field calculator. That's probably going to have a pretty good uh, pretty good impact on potential life loss. May it may get screened out due to cost. I don't know. Early warning time, early protection time, more destinations. Good. Ensuring high mobilization rates. Yep. Yep, for the secret scenario, identifying a problem and issuing a timely warning following a seismic event. Yeah, good. And hazard identification hazard identification time is influential for the secret scenario. Mm -hmm, for sure, these are great. These are specific to the alternatives that we're looking at. Really good, nice. All right, have that messages written down. Make them convincing. Um, maybe I'll ask for those that um, want to make the message more convincing. Maybe I'll ask those groups to build a, a little message and, and then try to convince us. Early warning sensitivity. Okay, good, good. And hey, whoever put a concern, these people ask, there is nothing we can do. Early warning issuance, faster distribution of warnings, clearer warning messaging, good. Minimize warning issuance delay. Okay, good. We're having a, I'm seeing a trend, which is great. Um, okay, I'm kind of just picking through now, looking for um, something a little bit unique. Change the main arteries, the, the roadway, to one way to expedite evacuation. Okay, contra flow. Nice. And then how would we do that in Lifestone? We could go in with the road network editor and then just reverse direction on all your incoming freeway, I mean, your freeway that's coming in, so that you're allowing contra flow out. Better evacuation plan, okay, wait, wait, so where are we at here? Okay, here's another one, change routing of major roads, yep. So I'm seeing, the trend I'm seeing is, is better warning messaging, issuing a warning faster, um, and potentially adjusting the road network, Seeing some fun alternatives of what if every structure is retrofitted for, for to withstand flooding, so increasing the stability, 
and increasing the number of stories. That could be a fun one. Um, one thing they may want to look at is where the highest, um, where's the highest life loss occurring generally? And you could look at maybe moving those people out of harm's way. That could be another alternative you could look at. So have some fun with this. Um, we still got that half hour, so I'm going to ask you all now, how can we, other than what we're seeing on this, does anyone have any other ideas on how we can help these people in Deming? For, for either earthquake or, or a seepage failure scenario. What's that? Good damn safety practice. Does that mean you're reducing the probability that it fails? Yeah. It is. I mean, that's reducing the risk. It doesn't reduce the consequences, right? It reduces the probability, um, which is great. And, and when we're looking in a risk world, that is absolutely what we need to be doing. However, for this class, we're only focusing on the consequences. So, so how can we reduce the consequences to these poor people of Deming? What's that? So, what is, so that's going to do two things. It's going to increase the trust in the local emergency managers, hopefully, right? And it's going to make people more aware uh, that there's even a dam there and that they're at risk. So that when the message does go out, they're more likely to take protective action, right? And that's great. What about the emergency managers themselves? What could they do? Jim had a great idea where they could install sirens and as part of the community outreach, with a siren saying, these sirens are not tornado, right? These sirens are, if the dam fails, we have serious concerns about this dam upstream of Deming. Um, so, good. But that only takes you so far, right? Especially for the earthquake scenario where you have very little warning time. What else? Yeah. That's a great idea. So that's a, that's a new one. So you could put within your within your your inundation area, you could put a few um, destination points or build a few buildings that are multiple multiple stories that can withstand flooding. They're essentially like you were saying rally points, points where people can evacuate to internal to be safe. They can get there a little bit quicker. That might be a really nice alternative to look at. Good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Dual purpose on that was I makes it feasible economically for sure. Um, Deming, I don't think, is large enough to have large parking garages, so that would be something they would need to build as part of their plan to to improve their evacuation potential. Sorry, where was that coming? Yeah. A flooding, like a giant levee. I like it. I like it. We're gonna have to get a new hydraulic model for that one, but that would be a lot of fun. Then you gotta consider. You gotta worry about the probability that that flood wall is gonna fail. The probability, so it's gotta be that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you multiply them together, right? <laughs> All right. What else we got? Is there some fun ideas? Yeah, I like that one. So practicing the emergency action plan and then modifying it based off of what we're seeing here and based off that elicitation. And that's going to improve across the board. If you can do, if you can work with the emergency managers, work with them on more community outreach, that improves everything, right? Warning issuance delay, warning diffusion, and protective action initiation. So I, I always like to think about like, okay, what's the best possible scenario? What if, what if the city of Deming officials decided, you know what? This is, I'm going to take this seriously. We're going to be this, we're going to be as good as we possibly can. And we give them the best ratings across the board, like best possible scenario. How does the results turn out? Are they hosed no matter what? Or are they, do they have a chance to have some real benefits by improving their process? That's good. What else we got? What's that? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, so different evacuation procedures maybe, and could you expand on that? Like how would they be different? Like you're talking about like, a, like sending everyone, 
everyone on the east side, they, they go out east, but everyone on the west side kind of goes out west and the, like more directions and information for the evacuation. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, you had a question. Inflatable rafts to everyone, and so then they're always prepared. So you, so yeah. So if everyone has an inflatable raft, does that mean that we? How would we handle that in life sim? How could you possibly do that? Could you, could you just change the human stability criteria or? Because I think uh, like Jessica's point yesterday, I don't know the model rescue that would be kind of self rescue. Yeah. Like, more improved than. That they're threshold like very high clearance so that they're yeah. not out of the depth. Yeah. Then they can go, yeah. I like that. that that's fun. Clearance high to like six feet. Yeah. Do you put the um the the propensity to enter a flooded road, you crank that up too, or like, oh good, this one is flooded. I want I want that. <laughs> Good. Yeah. That's a yeah. So so part of the outcome of um, when we did Joe so is we we overestimated life loss. Life some overestimated life loss, right? Um, by a, a decent amount, and is because of rescue. And we don't have a good way to model that. Currently, um, how we handle it generally is we look at what's the history of rescue in this area. What resources do they have? Like if you're south and you're, you have the Cajun Navy along with all these other resources, right? And then you, there are numbers out there on rescue, but they're not. They're hard to be trusted because a rescue could be somebody who is walking in ankle deep water and they just have them, you know, jump on the boat, right? And take them to a dry place. That's not really rescue in terms of that probably would have survived regardless, right? So it's really hard to, to break out of those rescues how many were in life-threatening situations that could have left, easily lost their life if they hadn't been taken away. So we generally after the fact. So run life sim, here's the life loss. And then you look, okay, but we expect rescue to occur and then try to find similar, essentially, case histories to estimate, okay, what percentage of people do we expect could be rescued from this situation? Yeah. So a lot of engineering judgment. Yeah. Or economics judgment, depending on your, your field. Yeah, yeah, rescue is a tricky one. Um, but it's important to, to accept that it's there. And it... And I think it's also important that we don't include rescue in our compute only as a discussion after because it's no guarantee. Yeah. What about uh, the risk assessment itself? I mean, it would also be an earthquake. What if there's something more probable? More probable, like uh, oh, like um, like a different like like a different failure mode that's more probable. Yeah. So that's part of part of the good risk assessment, right? Is that we look at multiple failure modes, we throw out the ones that are unlikely, we keep the ones that could have a potential for happening. In this case, we're going to assume there's only two failure modes, right? Seepage and and, and earthquake. Yeah. Um, okay. So we talked about the failure modes. That's good. What else we got? How else could we save these people? Well, we want to save lives, right? I like some of these ideas I was hearing. We talked about, okay, so let's review a little bit. We talked about some of the alternatives. The big ones were reaching out and making sure the emergency managers are up to snuff, community outreach, warning issuance delay, all of that, um, message templates to try to get that warning to go out quicker, get to people faster, and people take protective action faster and more of them do take it. Um, that's gonna have huge impacts across the board. Um, we talked about uh, destinations, moving the destinations around, all those destinations that are driving people towards. Yesterday we talked about, okay, where's life loss happening most on roads? It was people going up onto the freeway or driving into the flooded waters. What if that destination out of the system, how does that impact? We talked about, okay, what if we have 
uh, more driven destinations. So, so the people on the south side will, will only evacuate south, people on the west side will only evacuate west. That could be fun to see if it'll have any major impacts. Um, talked about a good idea of uh, what, if we, what if we put in a bunch of structures that where people could evacuate to internal to reduce their evacuation times where they can evacuate vertically, safe structures internal to the levee area, or I keep saying levee area, to the downstream impact area. Um, that could, it could be for both. We don't have to look at, we can look at each of these alternatives individually, but we can also combine, right? So, well, okay, so, so that's true, that's true. So if, if earthquakes an issue in this area, maybe we can assume that they're going to build those structures um, to modern earthquake standards. Yeah, hopefully. Mm-hmm. In yeah, maybe the airport players have to but that may not be designed for weather standards and the house, so the house is only made by safe. Yeah, that's right. That's a good point, and that that's something I was I was thinking about bringing up is that okay. So for the earthquake scenario, uh, Nick talked yesterday about how he's taking information and, and adjusted stability criteria for the earthquake, right? And, and you can look at what if the, some of the key roads get damaged beyond repair and they, they're no longer traversable. So you can play around with, okay, yeah, we're, we're, we're thinking about how can we help people in Dane, but now this is a good idea because now we're thinking about, okay, where, where have we maybe missed on our analysis? And maybe we missed on our analysis by not assuming that those structures are partially damaged from that earthquake making them less safe when the flood comes through. Maybe some roads are going to get destroyed that are key um, evacuation routes. How is that going to impact the evacuation? So we can also do that with our, our alternative. I mean, this is going to be this next hour and a half is going to be a lot of fun so that we can really play around with these ideas and, and, and tighten the bolts. And that could be one of the things we, that you might want to do with your group is look at um, for the earthquake scenario are we really capturing how bad it actually would be? Do we want to go through and reduce the stability criteria on those structures to make them more reflective of already being damaged from that earthquake? Do we want to go and break some of those road segments to indicate that they're no longer traversable? Um, that might be a fun, a fun task to do. What if the, what if the, the city of Deming, the officials decided, you know what, we know that the populations are school, hospital, nursing home, prison even. Um, and we're going to evacuate them first. We have special plans for them. You could create an EPZ around those. So your EPZ right now, you only have one polygon, right? Well, you could, in, in ARC or something else, you could break that, cut a hole in that polygon and put another little polygon in there for those structures. And then they're given a different EPZ where they're warning. There's very little uncertainty about the warning. Their warning goes out almost immediately and they're evacuating first. Um, that could be a nice way to, to see how much of an impact that has.